This is our whole thing. That's it. I was living at the time on Hennepin Avenue between 6th and 7th Streets. And it was a place where, at night, you'd find people on, on the street. It represented Minneapolis nightlife to me, but not the kind of nightlife that the Chamber of Commerce would promote. This was like the real nightlife. Down on Hennepin. Down on Hennepin. Well, I remember going to a meeting put on by MICA, Minnesota Independent Choreographers Alliance, mm -hmm. and they just had a call for artists and choreographers to get together, and they had some money yeah. to do some projects they were calling Studio X. Then afterward, Roy came up to me, Roy McBride, a poet. He said, you got to meet this guy, Patrick. He wants to do, he wants to work with film. So he pulled me over to Patrick, and that's how we first met. He reaches into the pools of their eyes, the lakes, the rivers, flowing down Hennepin. It was a collaboration, yes, but we all really developed what we were doing separate from each other and then brought it together. Roy was definitely the narrator. He was the one telling the story. Mm -hmm. um, and he, would, he came to us with these pieces and Patrick came to me with, with these, these dancers in this movement, then I would have to figure out how to put it together. Wow! I was really interested in doing something very site-specific, very sort of focused on the heart of Minneapolis. I was just interested in thinking about like, well, what does a dance for a hallway look like? Do you know, or what is, what is a dance that's set in a pinball arcade look like? What's really exciting for me was getting to take what was my day-to-day -day existence, because I lived on that block and had been there for a couple years at that point, and get to distill some of it into a movie. Because he was living between the Shinders and the Shinders, right in a building in the middle of that block, which they call Block E now. Well, there's some lore even about the Shinders, that the dad had Shinders bookstore, and the brothers didn't get along, and she when they inherited the business, they split to opposite sides of the, of the same block on each corner of the block. Shinders represented a kind of interface. I mean, you can go into Shinders and buy porn or buy a Hustler, but you could also buy the New York Times or, or Le Monde or like some international newspapers. And so it represented that kind of possibility of mixing for me. Let's check her out. It also represented sort of like the line that the cop says in the, in the movie, like, you know, better not catch my kids hanging out down here. Um, you know, like this was sort of middle America or middle Minnesota's nightmare of urban reality. Father Hennepin Shadow Pit, Scandinavian nightmare. Multi-ethnic thoroughfare, Hennepin, down on Hennepin. Roy was what some people consider a beat poet and coming out of that, that family of poetry. He had a, a very unique way of, of speaking. It would be kind of slow but poignant. Minneapolis has an attitude. Minneapolis is an attitude. It can be the coldest place in the heat of July. It can be the hottest place in the cold of January. Cold as ice. Shake the dice, bouncing off the walls. I worked Come with on. the dancers to create the material the that, that was recorded. And Come so, on, you know, in that sense, the, the, co the, the choreography was really Cold much more a collaboration dice. between the everybody involved Baby in the so dance and just sort of figuring see. out how to, like, Come move on. from one element to the next to the Come next on. in any given scene. You know, the, the dance aspect of it, the stage was the street, the stage was the stairway, the stage was the little peep booths in Fantasy World. The stage and was then ultimately also the stage was the big billboard above 7th and Hennepin where we got to screen it three times. And we forgot to tell the police about it and we created a traffic jam. Right, traffic stopped. Traffic People stopped were like traffic. parked like it was a drive-in movie or something and just like not gonna leave till it was over. We had mega speakers out on the street. 
you, you could not miss the sound of the movie when you, and if you were like somewhere where you were hearing it and not seeing it, it would definitely draw your attention, like what is everybody looking at? And so it definitely created a sense of something's happening. Something's happening on the street. He reaches into the pools of their eyes, the lakes, the rivers, flowing down Hennepin. The Scandinavia Today Festival had coincidentally happened at the same time that these screenings happened. Somebody asked the King of Sweden as he was leaving Minnesota after the Scandinavia Today Festival, which he had graced with his presence, about his memories and impressions of Minnesota. And he said his favorite thing was coming to see Schindler's the Schindler's, this movie on the billboard, and all the people gathered for it. Jesus loves you, Lord loves Lord. Well, it wasn't Block E at that time. That's a more recent name for that block, probably after they tore it down. <coughs> It just seemed to me a real lack of imagination on the part of the city for how to deal with architecture, preservation, community development. To have this block be considered undesirable so that they could more easily tear it down and turn it into a nice plum for some developer. Clean it up, tear it down, in episode, no funky town. One of the great things has been to bring this film and show it in other cities around the world. People don't know Minneapolis, but they get the film. In that sense, we get to celebrate the reality that we got as specific in detail as we possibly could about where we were, and in the process of doing that, reached something that was more universal. Hell, man, this is our job. We're not even making minimum wage.